Be sure to visit our website at smarthealthtalk.com. Welcome back to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. We're lucky to have Jeffrey Smith, author of Genetic Roulette and Seeds of Deception, who is a world-renowned expert on GMOs, here with us today. Jeffrey has been working for years to gather and evaluate research on genetically modified foods and has uncovered some disturbing health patterns when these foods are eaten. Most people don't know it, but there is no long-term GMO safety research on humans. GMOs are most of our processed foods, but hidden on the ingredient and nutrient labels, and the pollen from GMO plants drifts through the air and contaminates other non-GMO fields. With as much as 96% of soy, corn, canola, cottonseed, and sugar beet crops now GMO, many feel this happened without the permission of the people. Jeffrey, welcome to Smart Health Talk. Thank you. Great to be here. Okay, so um, I wanted to ask you, like, you know, has something major been going on with our food that is impacting us all and happening without the knowledge or approval of the public? That's probably exactly what's been happening. The most radical change in our food supply started in the mid-90s when they took genes from bacteria and viruses, forced it into the DNA of soy, corn, and some other products, causing massive collateral damage and unpredicted side effects, and put onto the market without any required safety studies. Now, years later, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine says the animal feeding studies done on these crops show clear signs of infertility, immune system problems, accelerated aging, organ damage, and gastrointestinal problems, and urge all doctors to prescribe non-GMO diets to everyone. Really? So the doctors are even, like, starting to uh, give that as, a like, a prescription almost to their patients? Absolutely, not almost, very explicitly. I've been to several doctor's offices where every single patient is given a a non-GMO shopping guide, which we offer at non-GMOshoppingguide.com, and told, this is your new diet restriction, don't eat any GMOs. And the doctor reports to me and their patients report to me in the interviews that I've done, improvement. We've also seen the same with farm animals. According to veterinarians, it took animals that were being fed genetically modified soy and corn, they switched to non-GM soy and corn, and they had a lower death rate, uh, larger litters, and overall improved health. So, you know, these are just like some of the side effects of eating GMOs and even things like fertility. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. There was um, some studies done on mice and rats and hamsters, and they found that when they fed the mother, the female rats, genetically modified soy, more than half of their babies died within three weeks compared to a 10% death rate in controls. The babies were smaller and could not reproduce. With hamsters, by the third generation on the genetically modified soy, most lost the ability to have babies, some had hair growing in their mouths. There was also a four- to five-fold increase in infant mortality. And they've also seen changes in the organs, in the reproductive organs, damage there, including the young sperm cells. Now, this is very astounding information, and obviously it should have been followed up quickly to make sure that these foods are not, are not responsible for the accelerating reproductive problems that we're seeing in the United States. But unfortunately, when people discover adverse findings, the scientists are typically fired, stripped of responsibilities, or forced out, or they're denied funding for follow-up. Hence, we have very few studies, but when you put them together, they show signs of harm. So all these GMOs have, like, been infiltrating uh, our food system and our, our crop lands, and they're, you know, like, talking farmers into using these products, so... You know, like, what is the strategy here? What, what is the ultimate goal of these companies? Well, according to their consultant, Arthur Anderson, in 1999, Monsanto's executives described their ideal future in 15 to 20 years as genetically engineering 100% of the world's commercial seeds and patenting them. So they, their ultimate goal is to replace nature and completely control the seeds, which means you control the food. And there's a lot of profit in that because the largest trade commodity category in the world is food, even more than oil. Now, they sell it to farmers based on two main traits. Either the products do not die when sprayed with herbicides, so you have Roundup Ready soybeans, for example, where you can spray Roundup herbicide and not kill the crops, just the weeds, or you have pesticide-producing crops like BT corn, which produces a BT toxin, which breaks open the stomach of insects and kills them. In both cases, our toxic load is higher. We have more herbicides in the herbicide-tolerant crops, and we're now eating a pesticide in the pesticide-producing corn. Well, so, like, 
when we when we eat these, like what kind of things are they doing inside of our bodies when we eat GMOs? I mean, like no. I, I've heard that there's something going on in our gut bacteria with GMOs. Exactly. The only, exactly. The only human feeding study ever published showed that the gene inserted into soybean to make the soybean Roundup ready transferred into the DNA of the bacteria living inside our intestines and appeared to continue to function. This means long after we stop eating GMOs, we may have these foreign proteins produced continually inside of us. Now imagine for a moment if the BT toxin, which creates an insect, which is an insecticide, which breaks open the stomach of insects and kills them, imagine if that transferred from corn chips that we ate to our gut bacteria and turned our intestinal floor into living pesticide factories. It's a horrible thought, and it's obviously something that should have been studied before this was going on the market, but it wasn't. But now we know from a Canadian study that 93% of pregnant women have this BT toxin in their blood, as well as 80% of their unborn fetuses have it in their blood in the small study that was done. And this may be the result of a living pesticide factory inside their gut, or it may be, as the authors suggest, eating milk and meat from animals that are fed genetically modified corn or eating the corn directly, but it definitely came from Monsanto's BT corn, and it was in the blood of human beings. Okay, that's like really scary stuff to me. <laughs> so, uh, so, like, what, like, what does um, all these GMO changes in our food system mean to the average person shopping at the grocery store? I mean, for example... Um, like from the from the research um, that we now have on GM, GMO soy, what might happen if a baby or small child was fed a formula with GMO soy? Well, I was just uh, giving a presentation last night with a pediatrician and as well as a family practitioner, and both were convinced that they are seeing a new raft of diseases and disorders among infants that they think are likely the result of genetically engineered foods in the infant's diet. And they talk about permeable gut, which could lead to autoimmune disease, allergies, etc. They talked about increased autism is on the rise and reproductive problems, etc. And they believe that GMOs are a prime candidate. Now, we can't tell for sure because we don't see the actual post-marketing surveillance or human clinical trial. But what we do see is a coincidence, perhaps, that the laboratory animals have like reproductive problems and immune system problems. The farm animals seem to have similar issues, and so do human beings with this disorders like this on the rise since 1996 when the GMOs were introduced. Okay, well, there's going to be, we only have a few seconds left, but there's going to be a big GMO rally at, in L.A. at the Westwood Federal Building from 12 to 4 this Sunday, October 16th. Who should go to this rally and why? And, you know, how, how can anyone think they could actually make a difference? Well, I think people should only go to the rally if they eat. <laughs> if okay. they eat, then it's very important that they go. And this is to demand labeling. It's to demand awareness. And in the meantime, you can go to nongmoshoppingguide.com to help you pick healthier non-GMO foods. But help create a tipping point of consumer rejection. But when more and more people avoid these GM ingredients, they'll become a marketing liability. It'll be forced out of the United States like it already was in Europe. And this rally is a great opportunity to get involved. Well, I want to thank you, Jeffrey, for all your hard work because taking on corporate giants is a big job, and it's great to know there is someone like you willing to step up and take a leadership role in helping to bring this information to the people so they can decide for themselves if all of this is okay with them. Thank you. And, you know, most people are on our side. Ninety-five percent of Americans want GMOs labeled, and 53 percent say they wouldn't eat it if it were labeled. So we're helping people get what they want. Well, go to our website to get that GM, the link to the GMO shopping guide, everyone. So we're, that is a great resource. Thank you so much, Shep. Thank you. Okay, everyone, stay tuned to learn how an Italian farming immigrant has provided a portal to farm fresh wholesome foods for, from his homeland right here for us to enjoy. Be sure to visit our website at smarthealthtalk.com.